Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Sally Wentworth um, uh, from the Internet Society. I want to thank everyone for, for joining today. This is um, a webinar for um, the Internet Society community, which is a broad set of, of people, um, for, uh, to go over the, the latest on the IANA uh, stewardship transition. Um, as many of you, I see from the attendee list, many of you know, it's been um, just about a year since um, the Department of Commerce announced that it would, uh, that it intends to transition um, the IANA functions to the global multi-stakeholder community. And there's been a lot of activity, of course, by, by many, many people um, working together to try to figure out how, uh, what the best way forward is to, to carry out that transition in process. There's a lot of moving parts and um, a lot of different uh, parts of the internet community that are involved. And of course, the internet society itself is has been participating in the discussions and um, specifically is a member of um, the ICG, which is the, the coordination group um, that's trying to pull together some of the various proposals. Um, and Narell Clark and Demi Getchko, Demi is here on the call today, um, have been the ISOC representatives to that work. Um, and then there are a number of others on this call who are also participating in that. Um, the purpose of this webinar was to bring our membership and our community up to speed. There's a lot of mailing lists, a lot of different meetings, a lot of, um, Ideas and being being um, uh, discussed in various in various groups, and it can be difficult to to follow all of the moving parts. So we just wanted to use this this webinar as an opportunity to check in and give um, different experts within the community the chance to to bring you up to speed on on where um, that community is and what the issues are that are still being worked on. Um, so I'm going to turn this over now to Konstantinos Komaitis, and he can uh, walk us through the logistics and the agenda, and he'll help um, uh, moderate the discussion. So Konstantinos, over to you. Thank you very much, Sally, and once again, hello everyone. Before I pass on the microphone to the, uh, our distinguished panelists, uh, some housekeeping uh, business. First of all, I would like to state that this webinar is not meant to supplant the discussions or the processes that are taking, of course, place in uh, other fora, including the IANA coordination group. Um, uh, and uh, just to uh, let our community also know that uh, participation in the various communities is highly encouraged. And uh, I would also uh, invite you to participate in the discussions as they happen in the different communities if you're interested in uh, the IANA process. Um, unless otherwise stated, uh, uh, our panelists will be speaking on their own behalf and will not necessarily represent uh, their respective uh, communities. Uh, so please, um, if you have any questions, just know that many of them might be answered uh, by our panelists on their own personal capacity. Um, for you, for all of you attending the webinar, uh, by default, you're not able to use your audio or video, so please, if you have any questions, just type them on the Q&A uh, uh, function of Zoom, and we will be able to uh, see them and ask uh, on your behalf. And without any further delay, to use briefly our distinguished uh, speakers. First, we have Teresa Swinehart. Teresa is Senior Vice Advisor to the President um, Patrick Feldstrom, who is the Vice Chair of the uh, IANA, one of the Vice Chairs of the IANA Coordination Group. Elliot Lear, who is a member of the Internet Architecture Board and author of the ITF IANA Plan Working Group. Nurani Nimpuno, who is a member of the Consolidated RIR IANA Stewardship Proposal Team. Uh, Matthew Shears, who still hasn't joined and we're hoping to join uh, later, who is a member of ICANN's cross-community working group on the IANA transition process. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Demi Getchko, who is the Internet Society appointee to the ICG. Uh, and, with, uh, and I will pass on the mic to Teresa, 
uh, who will take first uh, the floor, and we will be uploading uh, her presentation. Thank you. Teresa, you can start. Teresa, you are on mute. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. Mute. OK, is that better? OK, excellent. We did it. OK, so that was the first step. Uh, so first, uh, thank you so much, ISOC, for hosting this. Uh, and I think this is a really wonderful opportunity to, to reach out to a wide community and also demonstrate all the very uh, large amount of community work at a global level that's happening around uh, this important uh, transition and this historical event. Uh, I was asked just to give an overview of uh, basically the two processes that are underway. I won't go into uh, detail uh, with regards to some of the specific operational community work because we have the, the leading expertise uh, specifically for that as well. But let me take sort of two steps back. Um, the announcement that is now almost a year ago, uh, basically on the 14th of March uh, uh, of last year, was really quite historical. It was um, the result of years and years and years of community work uh, to, to bring together and to, to reach a point uh, when it seemed that it was going to be a good opportunity for NTI to announce its intention to transition its stewardship role in the context of the IANA functions. Uh, to the multi-stakeholder community and to ICANN and to, to move this process forward, which has been um, underway for many years, as, as we know, since ICANN's formation. And, uh, you know, with that, of course, comes hard work uh, that's now underway with the community, obviously, to reach the final stages of a proposal. Um, and they ask ICANN uh, to convene the multi-stakeholders uh, to pull together this proposal. And if I could just ask to go to the next slide, actually, that would be helpful maybe for the audience. Um, there we go, thank you. Um, and they ask ICANN to convene the uh, global stakeholders together to come up with a proposal. Uh, and in that regard, also looked at, um, you know, how we need to go about doing that. Uh, their decision um, obviously didn't come easily. Um, it was well thought through. Uh, but it does also mark the final phase of the privatization of the DNS uh, and a reinforcement and further support and enhancement of the multi-stakeholder uh, process with regards not only uh, in the context of uh, what we're talking about here, uh, but also internet policy making and, and governance. Uh, if I could have the next slide. Thanks. Uh, when they announced their intention to transition um, their stewardship role, that is NTIs, they also communicated that the proposal uh, needed to have uh, broad community support and it had to address uh, some very core principles. Uh, namely, it had to support and enhance the multi-stakeholder model. Uh, it needed to maintain the security, stability, and resiliency of the internet. And this is very important because these are aspects that need to be considered in the context of the finalization of any proposal uh, and then the adoption of that. Uh, meet the needs and expectations of the global customers and partners of the IANA services uh, and maintain the openness of the internet. And so these are things that we've heard reiterated uh, over the year uh, in side conversations. We heard them uh, iterated also in congressional hearings. Uh, this is a, an important uh, set of four principles. But there's also another overarching principle, and that is that there will not be uh, the acceptance of a proposal that merely replaces NTI's role with a government-led or intergovernmental organization solution. Again, going back to the point of supporting and enhancing uh, the multi-stakeholder model. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so with our, um, uh, the request that we facilitate a process, uh, there was a discussion with the community on what kind of process to have for this. Uh, and uh, with the enormous community work, uh, the establishment of what's referred to as the IANA Coordination Group, uh, which I know uh, Patrick will be touching on uh, next. Uh, this has a representation from all stakeholders. Uh, sorry, back one slide still. 
Um, it established its own working methods and modes of operation. Um, and uh, we are the convener of that and provide support uh, to the ICG specifically uh, with regards to the work that they're undertaking. Uh, next slide. The coordination group itself is uh, taking in the proposals from the naming community, the protocol parameters community, uh, and the number uh, resources community. And two of those proposals have already been finalized, uh, the naming community still to be finalized, and then the ICG will pull together that proposal. Uh, next slide, please. So when the announcement of NTI stewardship role uh, took place, uh, there was also the question about what happens uh, with regards to uh, ICANN's historical contractual relationship uh, with the U.S. government uh, and any perceptions uh, around that being a backstop uh, with regards to ICANN's accountability overall. And this is a very important issue, and it's an important issue with regards to the entire transition. How does one ensure that the appropriate accountability mechanisms are in place? And in the context of ICANN, well, we have a wide range of accountability mechanisms, uh, ranging from bylaw requirements to um, affirmation of commitment review um, aspects. It's always very healthy to check, again, is there anything that's missing? Is there anything else that should be addressed in light of the changing historical relationship with the U.S.? So in parallel, um, ICANN launched a process that's specifically looking at ICANN accountability uh, and what uh, needs to be looked at, what may need to be strengthened uh, in light of this changing historical relationship with the U.S. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and for that work, there's been the establishment of a uh, what's referred to as a cross-community working group, uh, which has participation uh, from all uh, representative stakeholders uh, within the ICANN community. And they've focused very much on two work streams. The first being looking at the changing historical relationship with the U.S. and what specific issues need to be looked at with regards to that. Uh, and then a second work stream that there may be other issues that in the long run that are not directly related to the transition itself, but in the long run would be useful to address. And those are being addressed in what's called work stream two. The work stream one timeline coincides with the transition itself uh, and is expected to be completed along with uh, the work that the ICG is taking and pulling it together the proposals from the operational communities. Uh, for that work stream, we've also identified some external advisors, expertise from other sectors, best practices that could be used, and uh, there's a direct uh, relationship with the ICANN board as far as a liaison representative. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, that uh, cross-community working group has quite a, a wide range of participants in it. Uh, it has really designated and narrowed down its work within the work stream one to look at community empowerment issues. Uh, and review and redress um, areas and identified uh, areas of stress testing against some of the accountability mechanisms that are being identified. And some of those really are looking at uh, community empowerment, uh, uh, the role of the board, how to address um, board decisions uh, and independent appeals mechanisms. It's, always, it's also looking at how to address some areas of incorporating into the bylaws, for example, uh, some of the reviews in the context of the affirmation of commitments. Uh, and their work is ongoing. Both uh, the accountability uh, cross-community working group uh, and actually the naming uh, working group are going to be having a face-to-face -face meeting uh, in uh, the 23rd through the 24th in Istanbul uh, in order to continue the work that's been built on in the context of uh, the recent meeting we had in Singapore in order to complete the timeline uh, in time to be in parallel with the uh, IANA stewardship transition itself. Uh, next slide. Uh, any information uh, can be found uh, on the website. We have a IANA Stewardship Transition website that also looks at the accountability areas. And one of the uh, important aspects of the work of all the community groups is that it's being done in a very open and transparent way. Uh, so anybody can be participating, anybody can be commenting, anybody can be uh, raising uh, questions and ideas and views uh, for these discussions. And that's very important uh, that we get this right and that we um, have thought through all the different areas that need to be addressed. So I think with that, I'll conclude where we are on um, these two different tracks, but I'm happy to answer any questions uh, later. 
Thank you very much, uh, Teresa. Yes, please hold the, your questions until uh, the end. And uh, Patrick, we are next. Uh, you're next. Uh, Patrick is the vice chair of the IANA Coordination Group, and he will give us. He will talk about the work that they are doing. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you very much. And uh, as you heard, I'm one of the two co-chairs of the um, of the of the ICG that Teresa just explained. Um, the really interesting thing is that we have one chair, uh, Alyssa, and then we have two two co-chairs, which are not vice chairs but co-chairs. It's like one of those fun things that just I decided upon. I can also give everyone here the the wonderful information that Alyssa just got a baby. So she is actually on maternity leave and uh, got a baby. I just got an email from her just, uh, just a few seconds ago. Anyways, so what are we doing in the ICG? Well, as, as Teresa said, we are we're the group that is trying to coordinate the merge of the three proposals from the operational communities. We initiated the work by sending out an, an RFP to the three operational communities, and you will hear with them shortly. Uh, we asked for the response from them in January 2015. Two of them, the protocol parameters, the IETF that, uh, that Elliot is going to talk about, and the, uh, the numbers, which is the, uh, the CRISP team or the RIRs, which Mirani will talk about, the two of them delivered, while the names uh, community, operation community, has not delivered yet, and they are a little bit delayed in, in their proposal. We have, though, in the ICG uh, started to work by evaluating the two proposals we have received. And our work, it's, it's very important to understand that the ICG is not doing, doing any writing. We are not writing any kind of proposal ourselves. We are merging the proposals from the communities. And we are evaluating whether the proposals are compatible with each other, whether there are any gaps, whether there are overlaps, whether there are sort of disagreements between the, the, the proposals. And if we discover these kind of changes be needed to be able to do a successful merge, then we are asking the operational communities to talk with each other. This is something that we identified already with the numbers and the protocol parameters proposals, because both of them were talking about um, some specific role of the, uh, of the IETF trust. And we ask those operation communities to please coordinate and talk with each other. So the ICG is not the group that is sort of making any decisions. We are just evaluating and, and seeing whether the proposals actually uh, can be merged. We are, because of this, as Teresa said, uh, demonstrated, we also, of course, we have to be done with our, our work in, in coordination, both time-wise and also content-wise, with the, with the stream one, or with the track one of the accountability work that is done in the cross-community working group. And because of that, we have explicit liaisons from the ICG to this, uh, to this uh, accountability work that is going on. But also, regarding accountability, we also just evaluating whether there is any kind of, of, of overlap, uh, which means that, that, uh, that we, are, we will continue to be in contact with operational communities to ask them to, to look very carefully at what's happening in the, in the accountability work. Where are we at the moment? Well, as you understand, we have a little bit of problem to compare all three proposals because we have not received all three. But what we have decided to do is to move forward with the two we have as far as we can. Uh, we have decided to not go out with a public consultation on, on the two proposals. Instead, we have asked the representatives of the two proposals to do informal, um, in, informal feedback and informal discussions um, uh, in, in the respective communities with the proposals that we currently have so that the communities are having, uh, can have some discussion about the, the, the ability to merge uh, the two that we have received. When we get more data back from that, including, of course, the result of the, of the, of the names work and also the accountability, then we will, over time, update our timeline, uh, which still very optimistically look at uh, the ability to deliver before, before September uh, 2015. So, so at the moment, we in ICG, luckily for us, we, we don't have as so much to do. But on the other hand, having not much to do is actually very important for us because we have the ability to talk internally a lot about what we are going to do if we end up in certain situations. Because from our, from specifically my perspective as a co-chair, it is extremely important 
that we do a stress test, not only of the proposals themselves, but, uh, but we might actually end up in a very complicated situation with the process itself that, that Teresa just described. And we need to make sure that when we have everything outlined and we do, do discover some disagreements or, or incompatibilities between the proposals, we must be able, from the ICG perspective, manage to steer together with, to steer the operational communities in the direction so that we get a, a coordinated proposal to the NTA because that is what they have requested. We also do everything in open. It's possible to follow our mailing list. We are using a Dropbox for, for uh, all our internal documents which means that uh, a, a Dropbox that is publicly available. So you can also look at all our documents also while they are working documents. So we don't even have any internal working documents. Everything is public. And this is uh, just like Teresa said, something that you, will, that you have seen and will see in all the work that all of the various involved groups are doing. So with that, let me hand over to the, to Const back to Constantinus again. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Patrick, for this update. Elliot, you were one of the authors of the IATF IANA, working, uh, IANA plan working group. Can you please tell us the process there that took place there? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Konstantinos. And um, it's a pleasure to uh, present in front of everyone. I have a few slides. Let me see if I can share them. And, uh, let's try that. Has that done the trick? Well, yes. Let's hope. Okay. So, um, obviously, I'm speaking for myself today, as, as Constantinos uh, mentioned, and not for anybody else. Um, so, I thought I would start by reminding people what a protocol parameter is, actually. Um, it, it's really an identifier, and it is a means to extend uh, our, our, the IETF protocols. Examples include opcodes that indicate uh, what form of operation should take place within a protocol or an encryption algorithm name in, in, to indicate how uh, things should be encrypted and unencrypted. Um, TCP IP uh, or UDP service names and numbers um, and uh, object identifiers in SNMP are just some examples. And so they appear in the packets or in the, or, or in, if, if we're talking about a packet oriented protocol, here is the TCP header and you can see several examples of protocol parameters. And they're very important uh, to the IETF. They're, they are integral to our specifications. And they, in fact, help enable, uh, as you just saw with TCP, um, the, what we call the hourglass model, the, the, the protocol layering model that we use from, from IP and above. And so those are, uh, that's a very, very brief uh, introduction to what the protocol parameters are. There are quite a lot of them. And they are managed um, by ICANN um, on behalf of the IETF community, and they do a great job. And, um, uh, but there's a lot of oversight. Um, uh, we have a bunch of processes that are documented um, in terms of how the IETF operates. This is a question that was asked by us, uh, uh, of us by the uh, I ICG. Um, all of our uh, processes are documented in the RFC series, and they mostly begin with this RFC 2026, which describes our standards process. And um, the IAB has a role for the, uh, to, to oversee um, the IANA function, uh, which is stated in RFC 2850. Uh, um, other organizations have roles as well, including the Internet Engineering Steering Group, which, um, uh, which you'll see about later. And um, the IAOC also has a role to play, which um, administers the, uh, the a lot of day-to-day -day stuff. So um, we, we all, as a, a, a different parts of the leadership and community, um, uh, provide uh, oversight to the IANA functions. Um, so how are protocol parameters assigned? Um, even this is documented well, and, and um, so when specifications are written, a policy needs to be defined for a protocol registry. And uh, this is how, uh, these are some of the, the ways in which that can be done. And it's going to depend on um, many factors, including, say, the field space that is uh, available. So, for instance, IP protocol version may have a more restricted ver uh, policy than, say, an object identifier for SNMP, as an example. Um, so the uh, IETF submission uh, uh, is, is in. You've, you've heard that uh, for protocol parameters, we, we submitted something. Um, a few points that I would like to make, the first of which is that 
in my opinion, Elliot's opinion, and I believe we've said this elsewhere in, uh, as more as a community, um, the uh, IETF community is getting very good service from ICANN um, in the current administration of protocol parameters. Um, that has been the case so far as I know for quite some time, and we hope it will continue to be the case for quite some time. Um, we have open processes that govern uh, the, the protocol parameters. Uh, anybody may take part in uh, policy or in standardization uh, processes at the IETF. All you need is an email address. And we had many people who did participate by email in the development of not only the proposal, um, but in many of our standards and many of our pro uh, policies. Uh, we have auditing requirements uh, that are negotiated annually uh, with ICANN and the IANA staff. Um, we have, uh, if we do have differences with ICANN over time, um, we, we can and have worked uh, and communicated to work them through. And in the extreme case, um, we have the ability to change from the current operator to another operator, um, though uh, at the moment we do not foresee that as being uh, at all likely. So how do we develop our, our, our proposal? Um, we used our existing processes. Um, it started with what we call a birds of a feather session, um, where we all got together to talk about uh, the proposal and the request for uh, proposals that were coming forward. Um, that occurred in July. Um, and what happens after a birds of a feather session normally ha uh, is what happened this time. We created a working group called Diana Plan, uh, chaired by Mark Blanchet and uh, Leslie Daigle. Um, and then an individual draft was written. Um, it's interesting that we, we took the um, request for uh, proposals, which was a Word document, and converted it into um, our internet draft format, which is good old-fashioned ASCII text. Um, let me tell you that, that 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 was not the easiest thing to do, but in, in, as, as it turns out, it was uh, one of the more, um, well, let's just say that uh, thanks to the, a, a lot of work from others uh, that had come before us, uh, that was probably one of the more difficult things uh, as part of the uh, process because and views in the future. And so uh, what happened next was we, uh, the, uh, the working group adopted the draft, um, draft IETF, IANA plan, ICG response. And this was open to discussion and anybody could object and nobody did. Um, and there was a lot of discussion about the content of the draft that went on for uh, uh, several months. Um, there were a lot of edits. There were 10 drafts in a very brief period of time, which even for IETF uh, purposes, that's, th this is a, a pretty fast pace. Um, finally, there was a working group last call. And uh, the, our working groups work using the notion of rough consensus. Uh, not everybody has to be perfectly happy with what is produced. Um, and certainly there were a couple of people who were not happy about specific aspects of the proposal, but overall uh, there was general agreement to move the process forward. Then uh, that's not the end of it, of course, because then the entire Internet Engineering Task Force gets an opportunity uh, to um, uh, give their last call feedback. And um, when I say the entire Internet Engineering Task Force, that is to say anybody who cares to participate in the Internet Engineering Task Force with the use of an email address. And finally, in January, uh, the Internet Engineering Steering Group, after uh, going through their comments and uh, adjusting a few uh, bits of text uh, based on IESG comments, uh, they gave final approval in January. And so uh, that was the process that we used to develop our um, uh, response to the request for comments. And then Yadi Arco uh, transmitted our response to the ICG. And now um, we are at the point in the process where we're now doing two things. Number one, we are awaiting questions from the ICG about our proposal. We've already received and replied to one regarding uh, the name IANA.org. And um, we are also uh, considering reviewing others. We, we, uh, the IANA plan group can review other, uh, the, the other operational community proposals and provide that feedback uh, to our representatives on the ICG. And with that, I'll stop. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Elliot, for this quick uh, update.
Uh, I will now pass on the microphone to Nurani, who I want to especially thank because she's in Japan and it's in the middle of the night for her. Um, uh, and before I do that, please, in the meantime, may I ask you all to think of questions that you would like to ask, uh, to ask our speakers at the end of their interventions. Thanks. Nurani. Nurani. Thank you very much. Um, and apologies for my very croaky voice. I'm nursing a cold here, which is why you'll see me drinking some hot lemon tea. I hope you can still understand what I'm saying. Um, my name is Nurani Nipuno. I work for NetNode, but I'm here in the capacity of uh, a Chris team member. But of course, I'm not. I'm, I'll be speaking on my own behalf. And I'll try to uh, give an overview of the, the process the numbers community went through to, de to develop the, the proposal uh, for the numbers community on the IANA stewardship transition. Uh, and I'll also try to cover some of the key components of the proposal. So first of all, when we talk about the, the numbers community, um, it's, a, it's a community that we actually normally re refer to as the RIR community. The RIR being the regional internet registries, um, which are the organizations that allocate internet number resources uh, within their regions. Um, so the RIRs um, are five globally, AFRINIC, APNIC, ARIN, LACNIC, and the RIP NCC. They're all membership-based organizations, um, but they all, uh, and so they all allocate number resources in their respective regions, but policy making is open and inclusive, um, and anyone can participate. So you don't actually have to be a member of any of the uh, RIRs to participate in, in the policy making process. Um, all the, the mailing lists are, are publicly archived and all the meetings are also uh, streamed and publicly archived uh, to increase the, to, to make it a, um, as, easy as, as easy as possible for people to participate. Um, so uh, very much like, like uh, the IETF, uh, the, um, the RAR community or the numbers community, simply used its existing models and structures and processes uh, and applied them when developing this process. Um, so um, it, it, um, as soon as the uh, transition was announced, the discussion started first on a regional basis and that's uh, how the, the RIR communities uh, normally operate. Um, when the ICG came out with the RFP in September, there were a few uh, RIR meetings. Uh, all, all the RIRs had meetings uh, in the coming period after that where this was discussed. Um, and uh, there was a decision to set up this CRISP team. So the CRISP team is the consolidated RIR IANA stewardship proposal team. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but CRISP sounds nice, right? Um, so, uh, and the CRISP team uh, structure uh, was basically such that it would represent all five regions. It would have one RIR staff member and then two community members. So I'm serving on the CRISP team as a, one out of two community members in uh, the RIPE region. Um, so in... Uh, it was decided that all this, the work of the CRISP team should take care, should take place publicly, and all the work should be publicly archived. Um, all the RIRs, the individual RIRs, have their own mailing lists for these things, where the discussion started, and, con and the discussions continued on this, but it was also decided to create a global list, Diana transfer list, um, where anyone can participate in, and uh, subscribe and contribute to, uh, to the discussions. Each RIR uh, then got to, to uh, um, do their call for nominations for the membership, uh, for the CRISP member, uh, membership. And in November, the CRISP, was, CRISP team was put together and we started our work in December. So it was very intense work in December over Christmas and New Year's. Uh, in order to submit our final proposal in, in uh, January. Uh, just very briefly on, on how uh, we uh, worked to, um, 
engage the community. Uh, we very quickly set up a timeline that we um, uh, publicly uh, that, w that we published so that everyone would know uh, when drafts would be published and when they could respond. Uh, each draft was shared uh, both on the global list but also on the regional lists and of course published on the uh, NRO website. Uh, and we also made sure to, uh, all of us were of course subscribed to the global list, but uh, we also made sure to actively address each and every single uh, piece of feedback that we got on the mailing list. Uh, we also tracked this in an Excel spreadsheet for transparency reasons, both also because it helped our work, of course, to make sure that we had addressed all concerns raised, but also so that the community could see that if they had raised uh, an issue, that was, uh, that was at least addressed and discussed by the CRISP team and then brought back to the global list. Uh, we very much um, worked like uh, according to, to the spirit and the principles of uh, the RIR communities in that we worked according to rough consensus. Uh, like Elliot ex explained, it, um, of course in process like this it is impossible to uh, make everyone perfectly happy but we wanted to make sure that all, all concerns were addressed and that uh, we reached consensus um, uh, on our final proposal. Um, when we started the work, uh, first of all, it might be good to, to simply understand the current relationship between the RIRs, the NTIA, IANA and ICANN. And uh, so the NTIA uh, currently has the contract with, uh, with ICANN for the IANA operations. And in the RIR, uh, and the numbers communities um, uh, case, it's a matter of uh, I, the, the uh, ICANN performing that IANA uh, operated function in uh, allocating chunks of um, uh, internet resources to the RIRs. And the NTIA has no involvement in the RIR operations. It's also important to understand that there is no policy development going on within ICANN pertaining to number resources. Uh, the policy development for number resources uh, takes place in a bottom-up manner uh, in all the regional internet communities. Uh, in the case of a global uh, uh, policy, um, the ICANN does have play a role in approving a global policy once that has been discussed in all the five RIR regions and brought up uh, to a global level, but that is handled um, in an MOU that the RIRs have with um, ICANN. Um, so uh, just to, to quickly address some of the key elements of um, the number community's response to, to the RFP. Um, well, we felt that um, ICANN is to remain as the IANA numbering services operator. Uh, we've got very clear directions from our community that uh, separability is important in that, um, um, that there should be a contract between the RIRs and the IANA operator that regulates the, the, uh, the work of the IANA operator. Uh, while the community and the CRISP team didn't feel the need to develop legal text for this uh, contract, uh, an SLA, uh, we felt that it was important to guide uh, that SLA uh, through 11 principles. So the idea is that the RIRs, will, as the contracting uh, party, will actually, contractual party will be developing the SLA in consultation with the community, but they will be guided by these 11 SLA principles. And those principles are separation of policy development and operational roles, description of services provided to the RIRs, obligation to issue reports on transparency and accountability, security performance and audit requirements, review of the IANA operation, um, failure to perform, term and termination, continuity of operations, intellectual property rights and rights over data, resolution of disputes and fee. Um, in addition to, to, um, um, to having the RIRs perform uh, evaluation of the SLA uh, with 
with IANA, we also felt that um, it would be useful to have a review committee, which was community-based. Um, that would help the RIRs in reviewing the service level. And that uh, would consist of community representatives from each RIR region, so, and they would have equal number of, number of uh, representatives. Um, and the process of, of setting that up would be driven uh, by each RIR. Um, all intellect relevant intellectual property rights uh, should be kept in the public domain or where appropriate reside with the RIRs. And that is, um, and the IETF trust was uh, suggested as an acceptable holder for that. And that is one of the things that Elliot was referring to, uh, that we have coordinated post submission uh, with the IETF. And then uh, finally, um, just for clarity's sake, uh, so those are the, the main elements of the proposal. Uh, and because ICANN accountability is something that's uh, currently being uh, discussed in, in the names uh, community, uh, just for clarity's sake, we, um, the, the CRISP team um, very early on saw that this was outside the scope of this particular proposal pertaining to the transition of the IANA uh, functions. Uh, as this is handled um, uh, in the MOU that the RIRs have uh, with ICANN, and that's really, that manages the ICANN board's role in the global PDP. So those were the very main elements of, of uh, the proposal. Uh, if you want to know more about the, uh, the CRISP team's work with the number community, you can simply go to nro.net slash crisp team and you'll find all the publicly archived mailing lists. You can even listen in to our very exciting telephone conferences um, and uh, read all the documents and of course the proposal as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nurani. Um, uh, so uh, now we have Matt Shears who will be speaking um, for the progress of the uh, names community. Mark is in, in uh, Imat is in an unstable um, connection, so he will be speaking through the phone. Matt, can you hear us? Matt, are you there? I don't see it. No. I don't see a um, call in the register. Matt, are you there? So uh, as we are trying to fix uh, mass connection uh, problems, Demi, may I, I, may I go to you and uh, please uh, ask you to tell us your uh, perspective as the ISOC representative at the IANA Coordination Group. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Constantinos and, and Sally for the invitation to be in this webinar. Thank you very much for the support Constantinos gave Narel and myself a big support during the all these phases of, of development of ICG and so. Uh, as said, uh, Narel and uh, Daryl Clark and myself are the two uh, ISOC uh, representatives to the ICG group, and uh, we are following the, the main group that the main work that the others are, are doing on that. Uh, just to, to, to begin with, more or less the, the, the general picture, uh, like uh, Teresa and uh, Patrick. Did some, some time ago. Uh, my, my personal position, and that is to keep this quite simple, because we are dealing with with a transition of the oversight from uh, NETIA to some another body, or maybe some some existing body, and we have to keep in mind that this uh, oversight is basically related to the to the content of, of the root of, of the internet or the. the the changes on the route. This is the, the, the place where the oversight is, is taking place. And we can add to this that since 98, since, since 2000, when the, the contract was signed between the Department of Commerce and uh, IANA, I really don't uh, remember any, any 
important uh, step uh, with, with any kind of active uh, changes that uh, NTIA or, or Department of Commerce did in this uh, content. I, I'm quite happy to see that IANA is doing an excellent function all this time. And <clears throat> this was the, the last phase, as Teresa said, of the privatization of, of the DNS system that began in 97 with the green paper and so. And uh, ICANN was, was, was constructed, entered in the game exactly to, to take the role of, of the old IANA I was working uh, in the University of Southern California information system. Then uh, I can took part, uh, took took a, a good uh, <coughs> portion of, of this work, but still there, there remained a, a contract in place between the NTIA and the IANA function to to oversight this very critical function of of keeping the the root of the internet working well. Then I, I see the, the three major components on this on this work is, is done by the three major customers. The, these three customers are the protocols, as Eliot said very well, and I, I suppose the, the oversight in that area is quite well solved from the very beginning. It's not a strong uh, hand of anyone here except of the, the, the community itself. It's, it's very good to have the community very active on that and very well uh, equated in the whole process. The second important community uh, uh, we have just heard uh, uh, Nurani about the CRISP uh, proposal, the, the numbers community. It's also a well uh, suited thing. I don't don't see problems on that. We in the ICG have the both proposals at, at our disposition to try to to check the, if they are current between them. And if they are current between why, why, what the NETIA expressed in, in, in the RFP. But the, the third component is, is, is by far the most complex, is the component of the names community. Uh, this is, is, is complex because it deals with the, the generic names, that's a quite uh, uh, expanding community and uh, quite new also. Of course, uh, there are some very old members in the generic names, but it's, it's a quite uh, expanding community now. And the other important part on this community is the, the country could top level domain names. It's also well established an old community, but with, with several uh, 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 specific situations, the local law, the local community, the local framework, and so on and so on. Then this is the part uh, of, the, of the composite proposal where we have to take more care and have to look with uh, more, more caref carefully about. And of course, we are in phase of, of, of open to, to community and we are very eager to get input from the, the eyes of community and from the whole community on that area. But uh, in my view, it's very important to keep this, this process quite simple. Of course, uh, there are, uh, when you open a, an issue like that and we was expecting to have this transition for many years uh, from now, but now it's time to, to try to get this transition complete. But when you open this issue, a lot of other options and agendas uh, uh, enter, enter in, the, in the arena, arena of discussion, and the, the, the best way is not to, to make the thing uh, more complex that we need. I suppose IANA is an operation, operational function, I suppose uh, IANA is doing his work quite well for the numbers and the protocols community without any kind of, of extra oversight. And I will have the two proposals on hand to check and make the, the improvement, the, 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 the <coughs> adjustments needed or make a proposal that can combine these two proposals. But to have to take, we have to take care also with the names and this is a work in, in progress job. We don't have yet the proposal from this community. And the names community, as I said, is the, the major uh, uh, community involved with the oversight. We have to take care about uh, the inclusion of new generic top level domains with the, the eventual possibility of redelegation and delegation of country codes. It, it's really a tough problem. 
And the, the important thing is to keep Ayana outside of the political uh, arena, in my opinion. L let Ayana to be just the operational function, uh, as it has been till now. But we have to have some way to, to review, to redress if something is going wrong. Actually, this is in the hands of NTIA, but this will be uh, <coughs> forwarded to the community, to the uh, multi-stakeholder multi <coughs> community. It will be very good for the internet to have this uh, in their own hands. And we are, as I said, uh, expecting to, to see all the inputs and to try to build a very solid proposal for this transition to complete in a more favorable, the most favorable way we can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Demi. Um, unfortunately, Matthias is not able to connect due to connectivity issues, so I will revert back to Teresa Swinehart uh, to give us a very brief uh, update on the progress of the NAME uh, community uh, and where things start. Matthias, his apologies. Thank you, Teresa. Seems to be an issue. There. That sound good? Good. Um, so, uh, first of all, I'm not Matthew Shears, and, and uh, my apologies, and uh, nor am I uh, one of the uh, co-chairs of, of the cross-community working group for the naming. But I'll do a quick summary and, and hope I give it as much justice as, as the leadership itself would. Uh, the, the naming community decided to take an approach uh, uh, by creating what they refer to as a cross-community working group, which involves uh, the stakeholders and had uh, chartering organizations adopt the charter uh, for uh, the work that this group would undertake. And so the group encompasses uh, not just the direct naming community, so the direct uh, customers of the IANA functions, um, it also includes uh, business community representation, um, the at-large community, uh, the government uh, representation as well. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the diversity of uh, some of the chartering organizations that adopted the charter. Um, the, the naming community, of course, is uh, a, a little bit more complex, not to indicate that uh, protocol parameters or IP addressing is not complex and, and has its own challenges. Uh, but I, I think as Demi had identified as well, in the naming community, you have not only the uh, generic uh, top-level domains, uh, but you also have uh, the country code top-level domains, which are for countries in distinct economies. So there's a, a very wide range of participants uh, that are engaging. Uh, the group has worked very, very hard um, over the past many weeks in order to really try to identify what are the range of issues that are um, of concern and of relevance uh, to the communities and to identify uh, specifically, obviously, for the naming community, what are the key areas that need to be addressed uh, with regards to NTI's uh, stewardship transition. Uh, some of the areas that uh, they had identified are actually issues around broader accountability. Um, of ICANN, and so they've been working very hard with um, the cross-community working group on accountability to ensure that that group is addressing uh, the issues that are relevant to the broader accountability in light of the changing relationship with the U.S. administration, thereby enabling the naming community to really focus in specifically on uh, the needs of the naming community space with regards uh, to their proposal that would then go to the ICG. Uh, they had several uh, very intensive meetings and conference calls, uh, including over the holidays. Uh, and uh, at the recent ICANN meeting in Singapore, again, some very intensive discussions uh, and have uh, moved their working methods to now uh, borrowing from um, the ITF and, and others, uh, the creation of some specific design teams to focus in on some very operational components uh, that the naming community would like to put together uh, for a proposal. Uh, they're now moving to uh, you know, very active work and will be having a face-to-face -face meeting uh, in Istanbul uh, at the end of March where they hope to be able to coalesce something uh, to put out for public comment again uh, shortly. Uh, so this is uh, just sort of an overview of where they are in the process. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, or um, I notice that there's participants uh, on this call who uh, may also be participating in those groups uh, in case uh, they would like to add anything to that or um, have any questions. So I hope that's helpful. 
Very, thank you very much, uh, Teresa, for stepping in and for, for giving us uh, this update. Uh, I would like to thank you all and now open the floor to questions. May I remind you that you're not able to use your audio, participants are not able to use their audio or video, so please type your questions uh, and I will uh, revert them to our uh, speakers. Any questions also from my colleagues here in the room? Uh, Constantino says people are maybe um, hopefully typing away. Um, I might uh, just ask the question. There was a lot of discussion, of course, in Singapore and, and since then on um, the timeline and how, um, uh, how to manage that to the September 15th um, target and then beyond that. And I wondered if, if anybody, um, maybe Patrick or Teresa or others, want to, to take that up. I think that's a question that I hear a lot about and might be good to get clarity on. Well, I can, I can start if you want to. Uh, what we have done in, in ICG, as you will see, if you go to our Dropbox and look at the, in the folder timeline, we still do have a timeline that, um, uh, that deliver in September. On the other hand, the timeline uh, and also our process consists of a number of steps. And for each one of those steps, you need a certain input, and that will, give, that will result in some kind of action. And, and some, some things in the work that we are doing, just for example, evaluation of the proposal from the names operation community is blocked because we have not received that yet. So, so, uh, so I think we will see in multiple places that one of our connected processes is blocked by, or blocked by sort of going slow forward just because of, of something else. And at the moment, uh, from the ICG perspective, we are waiting for the names community. As soon as that one arrives to us, then we will do a better calculation on, on what our timeline is. But you will still be able to know already today what steps we will go through. What we don't know is when we are going to go through each one of those steps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. We have uh, a question from one of the uh, of our participants, and I'm sorry if I am uh, mispronouncing your name. It's Jian Chuan Chang, uh, and uh, he has a question for Teresa and Patrick. They both mentioned that any suggestions or ideas are welcome in the process of developing the ICG report. Just wonder what the channels are. For example, any email address I can send my suggestions to. Can someone please take that? Patrick, Teresa? Yeah, I can, I can start by giving a short uh, response to the, uh, to the ICG branch, and then Teresa might uh, be able to continue to explain this. Um, from an ICG perspective, uh, as both myself and, and Demi said, we are not really writing anything ourselves. Uh, we, instead of just consolidating and merging the proposals done in each one of the various operation communities, Two of them has already, developed, has already delivered, so at the moment it is the, the CWG names in ICANN. That is where the actual, the, the third of the three operation communities, that's where they are working on their proposal. So to be able to, to participate and come with a, with a suggestion on how to, how to help with the, the remaining one third of, of the ICG branch, you should participate in the CWG names. Thank you, Patrick. Teresa, anything you would like to add? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, if one goes uh, to the stewardship website that we've put up, you also see a listing of um, uh, where you can sign up to participate in uh, either the accountability process uh, or the naming community process, obviously, uh, as well as um, there's information, um, as, was, as was highlighted uh, uh, by Narani and others of the openness with which the other communities had conducted their work um, as they were finalizing their proposals. Uh, but specifically, you can obviously sign up for um, both the accountability process, which is currently underway, uh, and the work of the naming community process, which is underway, and uh, join any of those lists and discussions. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, that was helpful. I don't see any other questions from the participants, so I will just ask very quickly, uh, any one of you, uh, the NTIA has set out some uh, criteria that Teresa walked us through in the beginning, and that they were also uh, part of the request for proposals that came out of the ICG. Um, why 
do we think, why do you think better yet that these criteria are significant and why did the NTIA signal out these five very basic and fundamental uh, issues that all communities should address? This is open to anyone. Uh, please jump in. Thank you. Well, uh, this is Elliot. Um, I'll just add, uh, I think to start with, um, they, they took into account the security and stability of the internet. Um, and I, for one, am pleased with that. Uh, I can't think of anything that's more important uh, in terms of the ongoing uh, IANA functions. Um, uh, I, I'm not going to speak to all the other ones other than, to, uh, other than the support the multi-stakeholder framework and also to support global customers. We're a global network, and um, I, I, obviously the, the functions need to scale as they have uh, to worldwide use. And given the size of the Internet's use, uh, I think we have a very nice demonstration as just to how well things have scaled up for now. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot. Anyone else would like to add anything? Okay, I will try to add something else. Uh, yeah, uh, ju just to remember that IANA began in a very technical uh, environment and then evolved to a, a multi-stakeholder thing because you have, of course, the, the other communities very interested in, in keeping the internet uh, in a very good shape. Of course, the stability and security is fundamental to have the things going on in the right way. But it's important also, and the NTA stressed this very well, not to introduce a lot of other, other extraneous thing, other bureaucracy thing or something like that. And it's important to, to note that in the NTA proposal, uh, there is a provision that this cannot be uh, transited, cannot be uh, uh, handed to uh, intergovernmental or, or a governmental organization because they are just one of the stakeholders in the process. Of course, they, ha they have a say on any, any issues, but we cannot evolve from the, the technical IANA first uh, uh, community to, to a, a pure governmental thing. It will be very, very uh, uh, unhappy thing for, for in the internet, and in my opinion, it's not the, the best way to go forward. Then, the idea is to keep this in a very multi-stakeholder model, but without uh, the prevalence of any of the, of the stakeholders, and uh, basically, particularly, not, not the, the prevalence of, of some kind of, of bureaucratic uh, uh, board uh, related more to the government or so, something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Demi. Anyone else would like to add anything? Nurani, I, I see add, you. I can add a very quick comment. I, I, I fully agree with the, with the previous uh, comments made. Um, I mean, when you look at the NTIA requirements, uh, they're, they're not... Um, particularly surprising or controversial. Uh, and I think uh, we would all be a little bit worried if, if they had been, right? Um, so I think, um, I think they, they are simple and they make sense, and so they should. And I think just to, to address the multi-stakeholder part, um, I think uh, that part or that criterion is, is important because it, it is a chance for the internet community to show its maturity, to show that we've developed structures, uh, inclusive, open, participatory structures that have managed the growth of the internet to date and that can, can manage it, continue to manage it in the future. Uh, so I think uh, I also see this uh, transition as a bit of a, uh, an exercise in that, in actually showing that the community is ready and also uh, by doing that, it documents and shows to the rest of the world how how, um, uh, how this multi-stakeholder model works in practice. Thank you, Nurani. Uh, I, we have a question from uh, Hanvier Ngulaye. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, that Patrick is going to uh, answer. I'm just reading the question. I just read the answers through the links you provided. Was the ICG satisfied with the explanations given? Patrick, please. Yes, we have in ICG, we have actually, first of all, yes, we are happy with that. And secondly, we have taken a decision that the, uh, the, uh, the numbers and the protocol parameters proposals in our evaluation, we have now passed step two of the various steps that I just described that we will go through. I also would like to answer quickly the Yang Zhuang Zhang also asks, 
whether privatizational DNS equals to multi-stakeholderism. And, and my view there is that uh, we don't talk about privatization of something that sounds like it has not been private before or vice versa. What we only talk about is to ensure that the multi-stakeholder processes that have been 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 taken care of the D, of the DNS and protocol parameters will continue to do it exactly as it done before. That is that that the, the, the multi-stakeholder model that we have been using is something that should continue to be used, just like Demi just described so well earlier. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. We have another question from uh, Xian Xuan Chang, who asks. Open, uh, to, it's an open question for all of you. Does privatization of the DNS equal to multi-stakeholderism? Any? Anyone? Oh. Sorry, I, yes. I believe Patrick already answered that yes, one. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much, <laughs> Nurani. Uh, No, thank you very much. So I would uh, like, uh, if we don't have any other questions, uh, we can uh, end this webinar. I would like personally to thank each one of our speakers uh, for joining and for agreeing to participate and update our community um, on the progress. Uh, and before I just say thank you to all the participants as well for tuning in and for uh, participating and listening. Sally, any last words from you? Thank you very much. Uh, just to say, uh, um, of course, thank you for people to people for for spending um, a little a little time on this with us. There's a lot going on here. As I said at the beginning, there's um, a tremendous amount of intellectual capital and energy that's been brought into this process. Um, and for the reasons that Narani, I think, uh, pointed out quite eloquently, this is really important for the internet. And it's also really important to show that this model works and that it works well and effectively. Um, I think, you know, as you look across uh, the IETF, the RIRs, the names and the accountability discussions, you see um, transparency, you see participation, archiving of, of discussions and, and a real attempt to take uh, feedback on board from, from all of us. So I think for us, you know, from ISOC's perspective, I know many of our uh, members are involved in various aspects of this. It is complex and we um, will try to do our part to make information available. If you need pointers on how to get to some of these groups, um, Constantinos is a great resource here. For that and I know that the speakers um, on this webinar are all um, ready and willing to to engage with with all of us on, on these issues so um, this is again this is a really important milestone in the internet and in internet um, governance and so I really hope that people uh, step up and participate and and join um, join this discussion. So I think we will commit to doing uh, another one of these as the process continues to um, roll along. Um, there'll be many more um, probably turns along the way and more information that, that we'll want to get out to the community. So um, I think we'll, we'll plan to come back and do this in you know, maybe another you know, two or three months um, as, as the process continues. So thank you to everyone, and uh, we will see you online. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.